Alright, so today we're going to do the uh, lower control arms on the van and a few other parts related to the uh, sway bar. So we got the sway bar links, spring isolators, a 10 pack of uh, lock nuts for um, Moog. Then there's uh, the strut bar ice, or uh, what they were called actually, strut bar rubbers. Then the uh, sway bar for AC Delco that comes four of these things in a package. I ordered two packages so I got eight of the uh, rubber sway bar mounts. You only need two so you can order half a box. I think that's the way you want to go. These are the uh, Moog Heavy Springs 7272. You can check the uh, wire diameter on your springs before you start the job. These are heavier than the ones I've got currently. So we'll see uh, if I can get them in there and get the van to sit properly. Otherwise we'll have to get the uh, thinner diameter springs, but I'd like to get the heavy ones because this fan bottoms out quite a bit. And then there's the uh, lower control arms. So uh, I've got an uh, inch and 15 sixteenths for the new lower control arm uh, ball joints. It's one inch on the van originally. Looks like you'll be using half inch, nine sixteenths and three quarter for various fasteners to the job. Your lock nuts are inch and an eighth. You're going to need to get a, uh, a socket and a uh, wrench for that and a pickle fork, impact gun, another impact gun just to do some of the easy stuff. Smaller pieces. They got some uh, paint here, trim clad the gray and the black. Some copper anti-seize, some gloves for when I'm painting. And other than that, safety glasses. Uh, hearing protection is good when you're using the impact gun for sure. And uh, you're going to be under the vehicle when uh, there's no tires on it at all. So make sure it's going to be supported very well because you're going to be in a vulnerable position when you're taking the uh, strut bars out. Uh, and uh, I guess I'll put the camera down for a minute, get set up on the other side and we'll start taking the vehicle apart. Alright, so it looks like the order operation is going to be to disconnect the sway bar and the strut bar at the back then do the strut bar up at uh, the lower control arm. Now we'll put the, the jack underneath of the lower control arm and uh, split the ball joint and then let the, the spring down. I'm trying to decide if I'm going to use a spring compressor to do this part of the job or not. I haven't decided. I guess uh, I'll probably try to do one one way and one the, like one with the spring compressor and one without it when I'm taking it apart and uh, see how that goes. I'm not sure if I'll videotape both of those methods or not, but I'll let you know uh, which way I recommend when it's done. So this is 9 sixteenths for the uh, sway bar link. Let's see if this little gadget will get it off or not. Yeah, no problem there. camera the camera hanging off the bottom of the tripod now seems like it might work a little bit better as long as I can flip the video over so this is uh, inch and an eighth I believe so I'm using universal joints so you got to keep your distance parts after we get this out. So it's three quarter inch for the front of the strut bar. Hopefully you can see that. So these are uh, lock bolts or lock nuts rather you have to replace these it looks like the lower control arm pin that it pivots on also has the same lock nuts on it so you'll need to get four of those coming to 10 packs so that's not going to be a problem so three quarter inch
get you in there. need to have a ratchet on each side. I should have ordered new uh, bumper pads to do this job. I wasn't very organized, obviously, because uh, it's due for a set. So I'll see what I can uh, figure out when I put this back together. The strap cover comes out now. Let's scrape this off and paint it. There's a front and a rear for these pieces of plastic here. You'll see that on the, the ones that come in the new package anyway. It's marked on the edge somewhere. This is time to get the jack into place. Yeah, I've already taken the uh, shocks out. It's not too hard to do that. There's just an Allen key that goes on the top and then a, a wrench to undo the top of the uh, inner part of the uh, shock. Then on the bottom there's two half inch uh, bolts that come out. You may want to replace those as part of the job because they're sitting upside down and get pretty rusty. So I just uh, jack into position. See, it just shifted there, that's interesting. Might be part of my problem. I'm just going to check this to see if it fits on the uh, new... It does not. That's kind of concerning. We'll have to look into that. I don't want to go too far with this job. Alright, so get the uh, pickle fork and the hammer out.
see if we can strike this very well. Yes, we're past the point of no return here. We'll see uh, if I've created a problem by not using the spring compressor. So I would say you don't need to use a spring compressor. I see one thing that somebody did some time ago was they did not replace the spring isolators. They just duct taped them in. That might be part of the reason why it doesn't sit properly. So now we'll try to get the uh, lower control arm out. and an eighth. Try that again. That's going to be hot.
This is the lower control arm. So the rubber in this bushing is starting to fail on it. Doesn't seem like it's too, too bad as of yet. Like I said, there was some problems with the alignment on the vehicle. So I'm going to replace these. I'm going to paint a sway bar, the cross member for the engine mounts. So we'll get some of that done and we'll get back. Alright, so I've just been checking things over. I was able to confirm that the uh, ball joint is going to fit into there, the taper is correct. And looking at the uh, strut bar compared to the lower control arm bolt, they're actually going to be, uh, one's a fine thread, one's coarse, so you can't use uh, the same lock nuts unfortunately. So you should buy some lock nuts and uh, you can see that the washers, not too much left of it. You probably want to get new washers and maybe home fasteners all together for the lower control arm. And uh, I think that's all I wanted to show you right now. I got some real bad pitting on the frame, actually, to the point where it's starting to go through. So I'm glad I'm doing this job now. I can save it before it becomes a structural problem because it's just confined into one spot. But uh, if you got an older van like myself, you should take a, a look at that. Just taking the uh, sway bar off right now. So I guess uh, one thing that's important to notice is uh, the orientation of the sway bar. So you want to put it in so it's not upside down later on. So this will take it easy because the fasteners are upside down and they're pretty rusty. So kind of just take it out in stages if I can. Go in and out a couple of times if I can get, the, get a bite on it. doing this by hand there's a good chance they would snap off the impact gun the uh, jolting of the impact actually helps things from breaking in a lot of cases that's about it So you can see there's just a piece of rubber on each end that needs to be changed. And I'll paint all of this at the same time. There's some kind of retaining washers here to keep the fasteners from falling out, which is nice. Alright, just taking the lower control arm off of the passenger side. I've run into a bit of trouble. I'll try to show you. So the lower control arm actually got hung up on the dust shield. I don't know if you can see it, just right there. So I have to lift that back up with the jack and see if I can get that out of there. So you might want to keep an eye on that when you're separating things. I just finished painting the uh, cross member there for the engine support. I'm just looking at the springs right now. So the springs that came out are all the same height so there's nothing really a problem with them. You can see the heavier gauge springs are uh, wound a little bit differently as well. But uh, that should be uh, good upgrade to put the heavier springs in. So it's interesting the vehicle is leaning when there wasn't really a broken spring or anything like that. Look at the other parts that I painted here. So you can see everything is trying to be as glossy as I can get it. Put on the paint super thick. It's not like it needs to be uh, for a show vehicle or anything like that. Just want to try to inhibit the rust from turning up again. So I gotta start putting this together once the paint starts to tack up. All right, so we're gonna make an attempt to put the spring in now without uh, using the spring compressor. To do that, you have to key the bottom of the spring into the control arm. There's a mark for that. So we pull the spindle out of the way. Joint 
You probably have a much better view of this than myself. I think I can get it in. I just uh, need to get a something to pry it up to the first level here. It's hard to do this on your own. without damaging the grease fit, obviously. I'm going to end up putting a little bit of, I'll dig a hole here to get the jack a little bit lower. We can't get the vehicle any higher. Certainly be handy to have a rope. Hold that out of the way. Alright, I'm gonna get a shovel, make a hole, and then we'll get this done. Alright, got a bit of a hole here. I don't know that you could get this up high enough on uh, regular jack stands if you wanted to use two sets. You have to go up uh, pretty high or use a low profile jack to do this. Hopefully, you can get this ball joint in. Fairly far to go. I'm watching the grease fitting on the bottom. So that's how you change your lower control arm. It turns out you do not need the spring compressor. In my situation, anyway. Hopefully it works out that well for yourself. Let's get Sixteenths. Okay. Thank you. 
to line up the collar pin. So there is a torque setting. Depending on your competence, you should definitely follow that torque value. Because you don't want to be wrong. Because if your vehicle veers off into oncoming traffic because you don't have it tight enough, there will be consequences for everybody. Tighten the pivot bolt later on to get everything together. And there you have it. Keep working, we'll get back to you later when I got more together. Alright, just getting ready to put the strut bar back in. There's not a lot to this. You can see these are marked front and rear. They kind of nest into each other. See, there's a socket in there. This is a uh, piece that goes on the front forwards of the vehicle. This goes on the back. There's also a cotter pin they don't include in the kit. This is also a separate piece from the kit. So you need to obtain a cotter pin and a, a lock nut to do this job. Alright, so this video is going to end a bit abruptly, unfortunately. I realize that I've got some uh, vacation I'm going to be going on, so i got to put this van together in a bit of a hurry tonight so we can get on the road tomorrow. So for the final assembly you have to put the uh, sway bar links in and they'll come with a diagram on how to do that. It's uh, pretty simple to do. The uh, end of the strut bar there's two bolts that go into here. You'll want to use a, a pinch bar or a drift to uh, align the rear one and put the first one in the front one in first and then once you get that in you can put in the second one it's a bit tricky to get those two bolts in because the strut bar is pushing the lower control arm forward when you get everything into position and uh, for the rear of the uh, strut bar here they talk about putting like 50 foot-pounds of torque on those, that nut to get things tight and I'll tell you I had to put in a lot more torque than that to get the uh, lock nuts in past the uh, cotter pin holes so don't be surprised if you have to really reef on that to, to get it tight. Other than that, this vehicle is pretty much put back together. When you change the uh, sway bar isolators that go up here, you'll have to cut the old one off and slip the new one on. And kind of center it in between uh, the edges of the, uh, the U-shaped part that it fits into. You'll see what the, you, I need to do when you're putting it together. If you put it towards one of the edges it'll pop out but if you put it right center it kind of squeezes everything into position and it holds it together so uh, I think that's uh, gonna be the end of the video I guess I'll make one note about the brakes here that I've just realized recently is that you can move the outboard pad back and forth and I get a lot of vibration I notice it when I'm driving across bridges so I'm gonna be uh, bending these tabs down if I had more uh, time to do it, what I would do is uh, put some uh, Permatex uh, brake quiet. It's a blue material on the uh, brake pads to stop that noise. So you might want to look into that. I've already replaced the hardware on the brakes, but the hardware does not address the uh, outboard pad. So uh, this might be something you want to take a look at. And uh, well, hopefully the video is helpful for you. It was a good experience for myself to work my way through it. So uh, yeah, take a look at your cross member between your shock towers and see uh, the condition of that. Like I said, mine had some pinholes in it. I just uh, saved it, I'm hoping anyway. So uh, thank you. Goodbye.